We're on one of the COVID wards at Wrexham Myla Hospital. And for the past year, a place of life and death struggles. So, um, you're, mu you're much, much better, okay, from when I saw you a week or so ago. One of the team who fought daily to keep people alive is consultant Liz Brohan. She's on her rounds. This is one of her patients, Ian Kelcroft, recovering and just glad to be alive. We spoke to him just after he got the news he'd soon be going home. He's thankful to be alive. What did you think might happen? The end, basically. I thought I was just going to die. To be fair, it's like when you're gasping for breath and there's nothing restricting you apart from that disease, then, it's, you know, you just think it's going to be the end. So it was a... It's just been hard on me emotionally in that respect um, because I've had some other conditions, underlying conditions in the past, which is, hasn't helped this one. And, and for anybody out there that's, that thinks it doesn't think, thinks, that does not think this exists, then you're wrong. You're very wrong. So I've been here, um, Ken in the corner, myself, we're the, we're the longest surviving pair. Uh, we've lost two from from the ward, uh, they, they've passed on because of COVID, which has been an absolute bloody shame. There are 141 people in this hospital being treated for COVID. They are getting the highest standard of care, and that's been the case since this terrible pandemic began. But people are dying every day. And as the staff here will tell you, the battle against this virus is far from over. The pace of care is relentless, fighting for life, fighting an invisible and deadly virus that can lurk on any surface. Staff like Ward's sister, Catherine Ellis, have been living this day in, day out for almost a year. Dedication keeps the team going, but this has been a frontline challenge like no other. How did you survive being, being in this? You just continue to do what you're doing. It's exhausting, everyone's exhausted from every discipline, all the doctors, nurses, um, domestics, everyone's working, they're, they're working themselves to the bone to, to get everywhere, get these patients well again. Um, it's been quite exhausting, everyone's exhausted, but you, you just keep at it. Do you it's, think the public necessarily appreciate just that, what it's like in here? That's something that uh, does, I do find quite annoying when I hear out there that they don't believe what's going on and they think it's not real. This is real. It's sad. We have sad days, really sad days. Um, we have good days where we have patients recovering and going home, which is lovely to see, but we've had a sad day today. It's, 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 it's horrendous. Is there one moment that hit you more than any other? Yeah, I find it difficult to talk about, though, sorry. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, I can't talk about it. and the fight goes on. While we were there, someone lost their battle for life and the condition of a woman we'd hoped to interview suddenly deteriorated. The consultants we spoke to can see light at the end of the tunnel, but it's the present they're concerned with and the second wave is proving deadlier than the first. People are dying every day, yes. It's, it's, it's a disease which can hit anybody, it can kill anybody. Um, particularly the elderly patients are much, much more likely to die from it, but we do get young people dying as well. The impact on staff is huge. Um, everybody around the country is short on nurses. We're no different. We struggle to get enough nursing staff, and those nursing staff we do have are under extreme pressure. On here, as with many higher care units around the country, we would normally run with a higher staffing ratio than we're currently running. We're running with the minimum that we would re re regard to be safe at the moment. That puts a lot of pressure on the staff. A lot of staff are doing extras, they're doing overtimes, uh, and they are really struggling. So I think it's very, very different. There are many more patients, and um, a lot of them are, are sicker because we have so many. And I think we are having more people needing high levels of care than we ever had by quite a long way. COVID is an awful disease and um, I wouldn't wish it on anybody at all. And yes, if anybody, if, you know, if speaking to you now can prevent one person getting COVID by following rules and being sensible, then that's fantastic because we just, we just not being impolite, we just don't want to see you here. This is a war being fought by necessity behind closed doors. 
Those fighting it every day are calm and professional, but when you see it firsthand, it is very frightening. Ian Lang, ITV News at Wrexham Myler Hospital.